Yo, what up? It's your boy, the Gucci Sa Knight. Oh. I get paid enough to say that. So, review time. <laughs> the good tonight. So, carbon fiber op score. Well, jump on it. Finally came in. So, as you might recall, we had previously on the good sir night reviewed the fma op score the um cheaper chinese knockoff this one's the ballistic version and this one's the authentic carbon fiber because you know we like to keep it real here so a lot of differences that you would never notice with the if you only have the fma because the fma is pretty good it's an enjoyable, comfortable little replica, and you're like, okay, yeah, this is nice. I like this for the uh, price I paid, but you actually go into a actual lob score, and the difference literally becomes night and day. So, first off, for starters, was the extra pads here. The padding, one of the things that people seem to feel very different on. Comes with two different types. This is the three-quarter one that comes extra. You come with the half-inch ones. But basically, you've got this closed cell foam weatherproof padding here this is incredibly comfortable mind you and that's just kind of glued in on there apparently supposedly i guess it holds but there's also some sponginess to the uh bicycle helmet foam and let's so say you have your comfort squish and then you have your not die of traumatic brain injury squish so two very big things to keep in mind so these are the two ones apparently for different size heads depending on how much padding you need so on and so forth. So first off, the pads, one of the big things. Now with the carbon fiber, it separates, it's kind of your mid-level between the basic bump helmet, or prior base jump, which is just plastic bicycle helmet, and your actual ballistic op score, which is gonna have a bit more weight, but a lot more uh, defensibility. This one, the carbon fiber, is basically gonna be save, saving you, because like, you wouldn't wanna get smacked in the head with a baseball bat, but if you were going to, and it was just an inevitable fact of life you had to accept, this would probably be the way to go. Now, the great thing being interwoven carbon fibers, insane durability at practically no weight. Now, I don't have the beefiest pinky muscles in the world, but that should give you a pretty solid indication that it weighs nothing. Well, obviously, not actually nothing, but nothing weight-wise. Now, other big things, it has an actual headlock system as opposed to the, again, cheap knockoff that we're dealing with. The back, pad, back plate padding here for the nape is a lot better made. The twisty dial actually works. Make, yeah, it works a lot better than one in the uh, knockoff. The side pads don't have that little extra bit of foam that I thought was kind of weird. But yeah, it has the actual hard impact protecting foam, so you were going to want that. And everything is a lot softer, more comfortable, and I guess luxury car is going to be the way to put it foam on the top is also or not the foam the foam the uh velcro on the top is also a lot better you know what you're going to want to have your american flag patch on there naturally and it also has this little fast indent on the back part if that's something that catches your fancy the rails are also authentic so the aftermarket parts and all the fun stuff that comes with the attachments works much better on this Whereas on the FMA, they tend to slide around and not be held in place, which is one of the big things because I want to convert my sword ins on over to the rail attachment system that I don't want them to be flying off in random directions, which is why this was kind of an important deal. It's also absurdly expensive in comparison, but particularly running night vision, I know most people running night vision are going to opt for the base jump helmet because it's already expensive, but that's more or less all they need. But this one works particularly well. In addition, what I like... The main thing from the FMA helmet is these little dovetail clips here that actually go into the sides of the helmet. These do work with the authentic op score. So that's nice because I'm going to be modifying these into my mesh mask and give it away to uh, sit on the outside and just kind of clip it in there. I might get some buckles later just so I can uh, unbuckle one side, kind of like the halo jump mask I also reviewed. So as far as fit and comfort, this one is a medium large. You can see on the inside, there's the two paddings, there's the back pad here. These are all incredibly comfortable. One guy, I did read I ha did read a lot of reviews while I was waiting for this to come in, even before I even ordered it. Some people apparently really, really dislike this padding and this uh, attachment system. You can switch it out if you so choose, if you really want the 
Oregon Arrow pads or something of that nature and you don't like the headband. Now the benefit for the headbands, I've already got this thing fitted so as you can see I don't need to make any adjustments here but even without the strap it ain't going nowhere. And you can take those nasty impacts to the side and top of the head all over and be relatively okay. I do like the, uh, the texturing on the top. It's got kind of like a rough, coarse, rusty spoons texture going. Chin strap, you don't need the chin strap, but you can use the chin strap. It's more to keep the helmet from flying away, worst case scenario, so. It's comfy, so you can see it fits really well. And with the headbands being nice and attached, yeah, it's not, it's not going anywhere. Which is important, because with the older system, one of the big problems I had, particularly with the, uh, was it the Mitch 2000 Ace Advanced Combat Helmet? One of the big issues I was having was just the pads and the chin strap. There's a lot of wobble and the camera weight was extremely noticeable. Now if I mount the camera onto here, as I've done earlier, just to test it out, cinch down on the uh, band here, nothing. Don't even notice you're wearing it. Which is a big win in my book, although I'll probably have it connected to the comm system. Assuming my team also gets on comms because with it directly connected you can actually hear the two-way communication during pew pew which I think is nifty, so there's that. And yeah, you do have got your ventilation holes here, so another thing over the ballistic is if you're not expecting to get shot at or blown up but you still don't want debris and stuff banging you in the head at non-explosive velocities, then yeah, this actually works out incredibly well and you get some ventilation and if you're doing any sort of amphibious operations, you're also gonna get improved drainage and stuff. Again, it's very weather resistant, weatherproof, Probably going to have to do a lot of cleaning afterwards with some fresh water, maybe some airbrushes and sponges and whatnot, but yeah. Ultimately, absolutely awesome for the insanely expensive price you would <laughs> pay for one, so. Comfy, scrubbies, a lot of fun stuff. Kind of feels like a scouring pad, but also with the padding, you can set this up on your head. And as of all helmets, you can sleep in them. Not a big thing, not something that uh, people aspire to do per se, but if you were lying down and you're just out in the middle of the open field you get a chance to take a nap, then yeah, this extra bit of padding and stuff is going to play a huge role because your helmet's going to keep your head off the dirt. And yeah, comfortable, snazzy, delightful, other synonyms for good and whatnot. That squish is impressive. I can't, there's not enough words to explain how nice and comfortable this padding is for what it is. And yeah, you can actually wear this for several hours. The less things you have on it, of course, the lighter it's going to be and the more comfortable it's going to be for extended wear. And I would love to run some nods with this. Unfortunately, I don't have any nods at the moment, so there's no need for the nod weight and there's no need for a counterweight. And the more weight you add, the sooner you're going to get spinal compression and discomfort. But at present, with just the carbon fiber, it weighs nothing and is incredibly comfortable. So, probably overkill for Airsoft, again. But if I do have friends who like to go rock climbing and base jumping and doing, uh, well, I guess you'd call it stupid stuff, stupid shit to get into. And yeah, having a helmet to keep your dome safe is going to be a huge thing. Although it's not the end all. Beal. Moving on. Another one of the big things. Actually, I should cover before I even get into that. The back screws here, since they can, you don't get a manual like this with the FMA. This manual is, oh my, this manual is a lifesaver. So, the two back screws loose, you set the helmet up on your head, you determine how high you want it to fit, and you need to make sure you have about an inch from your brow to the top of the helmet so you can don and doff goggles with ease. And yeah, they don't have any interference there. So once you got that set up and the band tight and you actually take the helmet off, you tighten these two back screws, that locks this in place so it sits properly each time, every time. Now the helmet here, the booklet has a lot of good information. It also covers the high cut, the maritime, maritime, and the fast. The big thing with the uh, base, the base jump, the bump helmet, is that it's a bit of a different, unique design. So it doesn't. This is basically exactly what you'd get with a ballistic, except you would have a ballistic shell as the main difference. So, so the key things here to keep in mind is actually this is my favorite picture of all time. That's in a booklet with Bert and Ernie. And this just tickles me to no end, I kid you not. And then you got a lot of good information on helmet sizing, how to set the pads and set up the helmet. And then it gives you a bunch of uh, other fun the headlock system if you never used one before. How to tighten the OCC dial, big deal, you know. Clockwise rotation. 
where all the Velcro and stuff attaches. Things you can attach to it for night ops, for uh, was airborne breaching ATV with the mandible and stuff. Not a lot of airsoft mandibles at the moment, unfortunately. Mission documentation. What they're really trying to say is you're going to be doing airsoft. No, combat camera is a real thing. Although they have a GoPro, which uh, it's all about contour. Contour is just a superior product in every way, shape, and form, including price. But hey, we'll get into that for another day. But yes, yeah, so you got all these fun options. Breaching ATV. They don't really have an ops core mandible per se, but that side armor I've seen. Plastic knockoffs. Counterweights, not attachments. You've got a lot of stuff in this book. It is a fantastic system here. O2 mask. Again, a little FMA thing I got there, so. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of way, different ways to use the Velcro, how to clean the uh, pads and everything, how to swap it out, how often to swap it out, how nasty your stuff is going to get. In addition, you also have legitimate leather for the chin strap, which is a very nice thing. And this will be nice, dark, and grimy by the uh, the end of it all, after lots of uh, airsofting and fiddling around and rock climbing. So, fantastic helmet. Very, very difficult to break. And impressively enough, if you look back here, that's how thick it is. That's it. Carbon fiber is a fantastic material, and that's why it weighs nothing. It looks incredibly thin. And normally the military gets you into the f f uh, false mentality of, if it's not heavy, it's probably garbage, it's gonna break. I.e., you know, prick radio systems and all that fun stuff. There's nothing to bring the weight. Uh, ceramic plates. Ceramic plates also play a huge role in this because, well, they're heavy and people don't like having to wear them, but they'll stop rifle rounds where a soft armor is gonna get you, like, hand, best they're gonna do is do you some handguns, so. That's all fun stuff. And this, that's just the helmet alone and the booklet. The actual helmet cover is another thing you can pick these up separate if you really wanted to to protect any other helmets it's got fast on the back which is your indication this is where the back of the helmet goes and ops core up on the front which it also has on the nvg shroud so that's fun stuff it's got this red accessory bag that comes inside it you actually put the bag when the helmet's inside you put the bag through there and you tighten it down holds everything in place so i've got goggles and stuff in there once the Adapter has been done for the uh, sword and I'll also be keeping that in this bag. So everything I'll need will be in one place and If you so desire You can wear the bag Without the helmet or with the helmet. I mean The real question is why I mean just because you can doesn't always mean you should But we're doing it anyway because that's just um, how I like to do things It smells nice. It's got a um we're reviewing the helmet smell or the helmet bag smell. This is a this is a review and a half. But uh, it's a faintly sweet kind of warehouse hint of uh, daffodils and lavender. If you were really curious, <laughs> this is knowledge you need to know about the uh, bag. And it says uh, protecting the elite warriors. In this case, the elite keyboard warrior, to be exact. Oh, and there's a tag here. Yeah. Op score, small to medium to large, extra large, because this thing holds practically any and all helmet sizes. Oh, and it comes with the authentic uh, adapter bits in here. I can take these out. So this one, as you can tell it apart from the FMA nonsense, is it actually has the uh, little gold brass tab inside there. And it has a bit of weight to it, but if you need to attach anything rail-wise to your head, there's an option. I'm sure you can think of something, and I have nothing in my mind the moment so maybe the helmet's not protecting all that much after all and here you got your little light adapter thing I'm sure there's uses for these I just don't have a use for them not to say they're bad yeah everything's mesh meshified so better breathability and all that so yeah the bag itself is pretty nifty which is good because of the price of the helmet when you consider it and yeah so you have a nice helmet so what is my overall plan well the same plan continues over from the uh FMA Ops 4, which is nice in its own right, but keep it real fam, yo yo lit lit 100 fire, <laughs> is uh, we're still going to attach the, um, I might just run the goggles around the back and run a helmet cover over it, but I'm probably going to get the uh, swivel adapters and have to do all that cutting modification stuff. Mount those back here, on this boy right here, and get the sword and adapters, well the sword and, well it's technically the mark adapters for the Peltors, and then you're modifying the Peltor to a uh, Sarah sword and adapter. 
then that all links together and you can put these origins back here goggles up here and yeah so the end all end all plan is going to be to have the helmet as one piece with the chin strap or the uh yeah the face mask hanging free place helmet on head secure le buckle and then the plan from there what i want to make everything as easy as streamlined as possible is then take sword ends, pop free place over ears take googles place over face and then take the fun little chin strap or not the chin strap but the uh, ma mesh mask itself and go click and that's it i want to be able to just do that and then get out there and go pop 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 and then end the game go to take a break pop mask i really want to get that buckle that's the key thing i'm missing but i'll be able to pop the buckle open drink water mid game will protect my face but yeah that aside pop that free lift goggles remove sword and pop chin strap remove helmet just like that and that's the end state goal and do it with comfort and in style so We'll get some more work done on this. It's going to be a work in progress for a while. I mean, we got most of what we need, but after we get all that set up, then uh, probably move over to Ballistic because Ballistic is just super sexy and I love it and it will be mine. Oh yes, it will be mine. This drip grip thing is weird. I think the helmet cover is going to be interesting. So we'll do a review on the helmet cover when that gets here, but all in all, is this worth the insane amount of money? Well. I mean, you can wear it anywhere. That's one of the big things. If you want to go dive in the ocean, you don't want to bang your head on coral, or you don't want to bang your head on anything, really, then, uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. You could do anything and everything with this helmet, except get shot in the head. But even then, you don't want to get shot in the head with a ballistic helmet, because those are not rated for rifle rounds, which you'll probably be encountering. Yeah, so, there you go. Ultimately, stay safe. Um, don't get shot in the head. Preferably don't get shot with anything larger than a uh, 6mm BB, although if you insist, I guess .68 caliber paintballs are a thing. 8mm BBs, but yeah, generally low velocity, subsonic, <laughs> non-lethal rounds. Again, don't get shot by like 60 BB bags. There's a point to all this, this is uh, stay safe. Don't get, uh, don't die, don't get murked, don't get murdered. And, you know, also try not to murder people unless it's, well, justified, but... Okay, yeah, so, wear your helmet, and I need to get a better... This is the old unit name tag I got here. I think it looks cool, but I'll probably get a new, better one made at some point, so... But yeah, ultimately, lightweight, super awesome, love it. Helmet cover's great, all of it's great, and, uh, yeah, handguns are nice. For another video, we'll cover handguns. But yeah, so, yes, just a real quick closing just a position. You've got the cheaper pleather on the FMA. This is back to the FMA. See, the inside is not nearly as sexy. It's not carbon fiber, nor is it the uh, olive drab ballistic setup. There's that little padding thing I was talking about on the side of the pads here. And the really big thing is these are, oh, look, that popped off. Lovely. Thanks, FMA. Yeah, so these aren't nearly as well made, but they work to stop BBs. And really, at the end of the day, for airsoft purposes, not getting BBs dug into your skin is part A. The next part is, um, well, winning and looking cool, being as Gucci and fly as possible. And yes, that's what I got for you guys, all this fun stuff here. This is an okay system, but as you can see, this uh, dial's really thick. And uh, yeah, so I'll probably be passing that off to one of my buddies. My camera shuts off every 20 minutes, so I gotta end this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. This is a uh, helmet baller and fly as all hell. I'm gonna make a little fun little pose here. And it's gonna be like that, and be like, hey, cool stuff. But the reason I'm doing that is because I need a, uh, a little, this a little picture box thing, you know. That thing in English is what it's called. So yeah, cheers everyone, stay chill, Bruce. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about the helmet, it's absolutely baller. Feel free to leave in the comments below. I talk pretty fast sometimes, so, uh, you know, I'm gonna do the video slower, but yeah, cool helmet, love it. Absolutely fantastic. And um, I'm not just saying that because I invested the money and I can't turn back now. It is actually a good helmet, which I would be saying stuff like that if I had bought a, oh, I don't know, AR-500 steel plates. Steel plates will not save your life. Do not, uh, steel carbon has to, the, uh, the, ah, Ceramic plate has to break up. 
Love you guys. Stay civilized. Cheers. Bye.